Hey Flashaholics, as those of us in the US are still dealing with the throes of winter, Thorfire has released two brand new flashlights, of which this video covers the TK05, which is a single cell double A size light. So the TK05 comes arrived in this little cardboard box. Inside was the bubble wrap as well as two spare O-rings and the instruction manual. So the TK05 bears a pineapple style engraving on its body, which I believe first started with their TK12, although the entire TK line, if I'm not mistaken, actually started with the TK15S, which actually featured a older style, more akin to their TG06 line. Personally, I'm not crazy about the whole TK nomenclature because, well, Phoenix uses the entire TK series. I believe currently there are no numbers that overlap between the two manufacturers. However, though, I, I imagine that that would create some confusion at some point, but I do digress. But getting into the designs and features, right off at the top, the head features a crenellated bezel that is removable. The crenellated bezel holds down a piece of glass that I don't believe is AR coded as I can't see any, nor is it mentioned. And then behind that is a very light orange peel reflector that gives this a very nice smooth beam. The throat of the light features some mild heat fins as well as the electronic side switch. Unlike the TK18, the electronic side switch serves as the sole switch on the light. There is no tail cap mechanical switch. There is a stainless steel cap included. It doesn't really face any particular facade because there is no flat surface, so you can pretty much twist this to your own liking. Given that this clip does rub on the edge of the head here, I advise putting a very light grease here and a thicker grease in the middle tube so that way when you release the tail cap it won't also twist the body as well. On the tail cap side, one end does feature these two attachment holes so you could add a lanyard or a wrist strap although none was included and although this doesn't have a tail cap switch, there are two tail cap guards here so that way you could use it in relatively stable candlelight mode. In terms of the engraving, there's a hot symbol at the bezel the manufacturer and the model name here, as well as some various symbols there, and that's pretty much it. The TK05 can be disassembled into three sections. There's the head, there's the tube, as well as the tail cap. Now, the thread is anodized, so that way you can lock it out because there is no electronic lockout on the switch there. And these threads are not the same size, so you can't reverse this, so you can't mount the head on this side, tail cap that side. That's for consideration for those who may want to do a bezel up carry because tail clip only mounts onto the tail inside. So that way it's always going to have to be bezel down. Pairing beneath the head, this is interesting. That actually looks like a physical reverse battery protection. However, though, I did discover that with a flat top cell like this Windy Fire, I was still able to utilize it that way. So I think it's really more formal with the function. I don't think it really serves that purpose as a anti-reverse battery protection. Now this light does have limitations in terms of the cells that it can accept, meaning the total length. So diameter wise, I think the beefiest one is like this old PowerX uh, 2700 cell. That fits no problem at all. And of course your standard inlet loops, which are skinnier. Um, slight type fit, but it fits. Now the length is where it runs into problems. So this key power one protective cell is pretty long. And as you can see there, it peers just past the tail cap tube. Now the problem with that is that normally other lights, there's usually a retention ring that sticks out further so that way it can still mate despite the thread. However though, this one is just purely flat. So any cell that sticks past the end of this tube will not work. In terms of measurement, the longest cell, check out this caption right here. If you stay below that, you should be fine. And that pretty much wraps up the designs and features of this light. In terms of the overall size, here's how it stacks up with its contemporaries, although there are some old lights like this antique Phoenix LD10 there. But anyway, the light names are there, but as you can see, owing to the side switch, it does cut out some of the room for the tail cap switch, so thus it does rank on the smaller side, although not as short as, say, Manker's E11 or the T01, which is actually a turbo head size light. In terms of handling, overall it fits very well in my medium sized hands, although the tail grip, depending upon how you hold it, can jab into your palm here as you're utilizing it. The only nitpick I would have is that this button is fairly recessed, so sometimes fumbling around in the dark, and especially with these protrusions here, it's a little difficult to find that switch. But aside from that, no problems in using an underhand grip or a overhand grip and using your pinky or your other digit to operate the light it all works out fine. So no issues there, and given the overall girth, it's a double A size light, shouldn't be too problematic for those with hand ailments or wrist ailments. 
I suppose due to the crenellated grip or the flared tail cap guards, you could use it for strike purposes, either maybe in an emergency to break glass or whatnot. In that case, I do find it a little bit small, so those with larger hands might find that problematic to use. Hopefully you'll never need to use that, but just mentioning it just in case. In terms of the UI and output, the TK05 features three output modes as well as a hidden strobe. A single click will turn on the light from off to the last memorized mode. So in this case, I last used it on low. Then I'll cycle upwards to medium and then high. Currently, I do have this on sunny white balance, although in real life, I think that greenish tint you see in the middle is fairly representative. But the spill, there is slightly more purplish tint to it meaning that I'm seeing in real life versus what's being captured. With the light on, quick double press will invoke the strobe mode. And it's like a various strobe cycle, not a fixed rate strobe. To exit that, just simply click again. Now let me go to medium to show you the memorization. So basically, if you use the mode for more than three seconds, and then you long press to shut it off, the next time you turn back on the light, it'll go back into the last memorize mode. So leave it on high. That's three seconds. Shut off. Turn it back on. Goes back in high. Now these three levels, I do have the exposure fix, are very well spaced out. Although personally, I would have preferred probably a little lower mode, like a true moonlight mode. But of course, the output levels do change with the type of battery. Currently, I'm using Windy Fire. IMR14500 and the levels are on the left hand corner there. And now I've switched over to an inner loop to show you the respective output levels. Everything is respectively lower for low, medium, and high. with the respective lumens stated in the left corner there. And that's really it in terms of the UI and output level. First up, we have Thorfire's TK05. Thorfire normally doesn't publish any throw figures, so pretty much I'm going on my measurements here on my NIST calibrated meter. Now we have their older TG06S model. So here we have the throw summary. Although I only measured these two lines, I figure I'd throw in the Manker's E11 because it's comparable. These were both running on the Windy Fire IMRs. And as mentioned, Thorfire does not specify their throw, although Manker did. Here we can see the difference. The TK05 has a new generation emitter and paired with a light orange peel reflector. So despite having a slightly higher output, it kept fairly well in terms of not having a smooth reflector, nor a deeper one, in terms of the older generation TG06S. Ultimately, I measured 254 lux max at 30 seconds. Translates to just about 4,000 CD and 127 meter beam distance. All of these were measured at 67 degrees F. The TG06S slightly better at 266 lux, 4256 candela, and 130 meter beam distance. And then last but not least, the E11 with the XPL, so favoring higher output versus throw. And paired with the orange peel reflector, gets 190 lux, just to take over 3,000 candela and 110 meter beam distance. Overall, not too shabby for a AA size light. In terms of the beam angle, the overall spill is roughly about 70 degrees, with the hot spot roughly about 20 degrees, perhaps a little bit wider, but it does have a very smooth center beam because of that light orange peel reflector. And here you can see the beam side by side with the TG06S. As you can see, the 06S definitely has a much tighter and defined hot spot versus a very smoother beam of the TK05. Now, I'm pretty sure you're noticing that flickering there, and this is why, again, I am so glad that they utilize a new driver that gets rid of this PWM effect. And here again, you can see kind of like the emphasis of the hotspot to spill ratio effect. 
The TG06S does have a overall wider beam versus the TK05. So here we get some street beam shots. On the foliage. It's winter time, so not too much of it, but you should get an idea of the beam color and the throw. This is about roughly, I don't know, 20 feet away. This tree out there, I would say about 50 to 60 feet. By comparison, here's your original TG06S. Much tighter hotspot. And here they are side by side. TG06 on the left, TK05 on the right. TG06S on the foliage, TK05, and now on stone pavement, as well as some foliage, or at least what's left of it. It's the TK05. And here's the original TG06S by comparison. Kind of side by side, TG06 here. TK05 here, swapped around, swapped back. That tree, that giant bush out there, is guessing is about 80 feet. TG06S, TK05. TG06S. The TK05's runtime is pretty much typical of a light that utilizes a buck boost driver because it can accept cells like alkalines up to lithium ions. If you're not familiar with my runtime charts, basically capture the battery use and the various information for the battery here, the voltage at the beginning and end, what the runtime was according to ANSI FL1 standards, which states the runtime until it drops below 10% of the initial output between 30 seconds and 2 minutes what the max lumens capture between 30 seconds and two minutes. And then more importantly, what was the average of the run? Because a lot of the times these lights will utilize a step down feature. So it may state that it's 600 lumens, but you realize that that's not the 600 lumens all the way through the entire runtime. So that's why I've incorporated this. And then last but not least, the temperature. So this is the ambient room temperature, and then the temperature of the light as measured at the last rung of the heat fin throughout the run. So right off the bat, they've claimed 240 lumens for a AA cell nickel metal hydride, although they didn't state what brand. I utilize a inner loop double X. And one thing I've come to realize with this test is that this light loves high current cells. Case in point, this inner loop double X achieved 294 lumens at 30 seconds for a total runtime of up to 51 minutes, which is after it dropped below the 10%. And I purposely zeroed out the values here to record dips to show you exactly where the runtime is again, according to NCFL1 standards. So that exceeded the manufactured claims in both lumens output as well as runtime. However, the same is not the case with the lithium ion cells. So first off with the windy fire, I was able to only get 560 lumens. The light actually did start off as high as 652 lumens at the beginning, as you can see there, but it just quickly nosedives. And as mentioned, 560 lumens at 30 seconds. However, it will go through a continuous steady decline before actual timed step down as shortly after three minutes. After which it runs semi-quasi regulated for the entire duration at roughly about 90 lumens average, as you can see here. 
Now this keeps the cell perfectly safe because at the end of here, after 81 minutes, the cell voltage was still about 3.66 volts. So that is a good thing. However, though, bad thing is that you have to realize there's only limited runtime on high before the step down. Now we see a similar story here with the EagleTac protected cell, which cannot produce as high current. However, this is an older cell, never did charge to beyond 4.2 max. Um, this one is now settling about 4.18 max. And it follows the same pattern, goes through extreme nosedive, 444 lumens at 30 seconds before the step down slightly after three minutes. And it does this little weird rebound before stabilizing, again running semi-quasi regulated before a steady decline. And then at 44 minutes, it'll dip below 10% of that. Overall, the light didn't get meaningfully hot. Max temperature was 90 degrees for the Windy Fire run. But as you can see, if you want to run this for extended periods with a high level, I would recommend getting an Interloop X or its equivalent. I believe they call something different now, Interloop Pros perhaps. Regardless though, the lithium ion cells are great for a nice output boost, but only for limited periods. One thing I did note is that despite this dip, you can actually re-invoke high, although of course not for a sustained period though after that. So as an initial summary, I've actually had this for a few weeks now, and Thorfire is just one of those companies I've actually watched grow up throughout the years. First with their TG06 and then their VG10, and then their TG06S, although I never did officially review that one. But now with their two latest releases, the TK05 and TK18, I definitely do see a refinement in the design, and I don't necessarily know if they've quite carved out a niche for themselves yet because their lights are solid, not necessarily spectacular or stand out in any way, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially in consideration of the price that they're competing with. So overall, their quality still remains fairly good. Although during runtime testing, I did notice right there, the temperature probe, the metal one, I just simply literally rubbed it over the edge there and it created those two little nicks. So this finish isn't as solid. I really doubt it's HA3, I'm guessing maybe HA2. Aside from that though, the switch has a very, very nice tactile feedback to it, operates flawlessly without any issues. And most importantly, the major thing that I used to criticize it for was the PWM, which I do not detect with this particular light, regardless of the mode. Now it is not current controlled. As you can see, this thing loves a high current cell or I should say a cell with low internal resistance. So as mentioned, but because of the intentional step down as a protection mode for the high mode, I would recommend sticking with the Interloop WX if you kind of want your best bang for the buck and the longest runtime with the highest output, stick with that instead of a 14500. 14500 is great for blasts under three minutes. You get double the amount of output versus standard nickel metal hydride. But again, for pretty much typical daily use, I would stick with the Interloop X. The ability to use standard cells as well as lithium ion cells make this also a great light to be able to give to someone because of the fact that you could start them off with a regular cell and as they become more responsible or learn about lithium ion care, you could recommend lithium ion cells for them. I believe they've also recently expanded their support to 18 months warranty now, so that's a plus. But one thing, like I said, the key thing I really was glad to see about this is the lack of PWM. But overall, I gotta say, this is a very solid effort for one of their recent releases. I do like this design, although I can't say it's unique or new. This has been around for a while, although I think trending-wise, I haven't seen it recently. I think the last one I saw it was on one of Sunway Man or Japanese limited release lights, but this pattern is subjectively very nice. The UI is straightforward with three well-spaced output levels, although, as mentioned in the UI section, I would have liked to have seen a lower low mode, maybe a true moonlight mode, but I'm not going to complain, again, especially in consideration of the price. Other wish lists would be stuff like a electronic lockout, but as mentioned, because the tail cap side threads are anodized, you could just physically lock it out. In terms of the output, not, again, as mentioned, nothing spectacular, but not shabby either at 600 lumens. Although, as mentioned, you would need a good IMR cell in order to achieve that. So, solid job, Thorfire. I wish you guys the best of luck with the launch of this new light. As part of FTC Disclosure, the TK05 was purchased for personal use. Thanks again for watching.